When it comes to the care of our common home, we are living at a critical moment of history. We still have time to make the change needed to bring about a sustainable and integral development, for we know that things can change. Such change demands on our part a serious and responsible recognition, not only of the kind of the world we may be leaving to our children, but also to the millions of people living under a system which has overlooked them. In nature, the economy is circular. You don't see a depletion of natural resources. You don't have a buildup of trash and toxins in nature. And so the waste products of animals end up being the requirements of plants and vice versa. Pope Francis is a visionary and he's a phenomenal world leader and I'm so grateful that he wrote Laudato Si because it's not gentle and kind. It sort of hits you right between the eyes. The Pope is very open about saying climate change is human caused by countries that are over consuming their fair share of natural resources and the disproportional impact that overconsumption has on the poor and the marginalized and the developing countries, he's very, very clear about that. In Laudato Si, the Pope is calling us to look at the circular economy of nature and think more intentionally about how we utilize the natural resources and how exploitation of nature and exploitation of people, particularly the poor, is driving our gross domestic product. And the result is we're living in a world whose natural resources are depleted, where trash and plastics and toxins are piled up and now basically choking life. the Pope is calling not only to have a change of mind, but a change of heart. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change told us that we have a 10-year window. If we continue putting emissions into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels at the rate in which we're putting them in now, in 10 years, our climate system will be so chaotic and so unstable that we're going to be in a constant state of cleaning up disasters. After typhoons and hurricanes, we're constantly going to be in sort of a turmoil mode, as you can imagine. The destruction of nature and the abuse of nature directly impacts the poor and the marginalized and the indigenous people who are living in nature and living in balance with nature. When we look at how companies and organizations come into big pieces of land and exploit the natural resources, it always impacts humans in a very direct way. It pushes people off of their land. It requires them to become refugees or seeking a new place to live. And this is wrong. It's very unjust. People have a, a natural right to clean air, clean water, and good productive soil to be able to make a living. Some students get really disturbed when we talk about we're gonna pray that you know the earth is healed because they feel like it's not going to heal even if we pray because we keep ruining it. 
So they like to see action. They want to be a part of that action and part of the solutions, which is why so much of our teaching is sort of hands-on, reducing our environmental footprint on our campus in measurable ways. And that's how we make progress. In this space in the greenhouse, our students are conducting research with faculty on integrated pest management. An example is we have a lot of aphids in here that feed on our crops. And instead of using chemicals to kill the aphids, we bring in ladybugs, which is a type of beetle that feeds on the aphid. And that's what we call integrated pest management. It's using one form of life to manage a pest. And in some cases, our students are looking at traits of plants as they try to adapt to an increasing temperature and rainfall with climate change. Here you can see the aquaponics facility. And aquaponics is a system that combines aquaculture, which is growing fish, with hydroponics, which is growing crops without the use of soil, but in a fertilized water. In this aquaponics facility, we're growing tilapia and they grow pretty quickly and they produce a lot of feces and liquid urine that is then utilized and fertilizes all of the vegetables and the greens that we're growing in the fish water. And it takes about one year for the fish to grow from the little baby fry up to a two pound fish that is ready to go to market. And the only inputs that you need to add to the system are fish food and then the energy to move the water through the pump. These are pieces of styrofoam that we have drilled round holes in in order to drop small plants that are in pots and the pots are perforated with holes. So when the pots go down into this floating raft of styrofoam, their roots go right through the hole to the fish water that's below. In terms of the plants, we're able to harvest every one to two weeks. So there's a lot more harvest of the vegetables that we're getting from the aquaponics facility than there is of the fish. And when you put the two together, it becomes very sustainable because the waste of the fish becomes the fertilizer that feeds the plants. The plants, in turn, are the biological filter that cleans and oxygenates the water that goes back to the fish. So you're basically only using the energy of a water pump to do all the work. You're distributing the resources that the plants and animals uh, provide to one another. We're learning how nature does it in a very built environment. What we're really trying to teach in the greenhouse is how to grow food in a very sustainable way that requires very few inputs and makes very little waste. Our goal in the greenhouse is to be zero waste and zero energy. I have hope in the desire of our students to be part of the solution to our environmental problems. I also want to be a positive role model for our students and for our faculty and staff. And I don't believe that we should give up. I believe that we need to keep working on this. And I believe that um, it's God's desire for us to use the brains that we were given not to destroy the beauty of creation in our own habitats where we live, but to steward and care for creation and to remediate and build back and rejuvenate life on our planet. I just believe that strongly. I think that's what we're called here to do.